1340 96.5 KVGC, a Saturday morning visit with Douglas Viviani of Everything Old is New Again. Tonight, Douglas and David Cohn host the show called Everything Old is New Again that examines our pop culture, where it came from, and why it's still popular and definitely make radio fun. Douglas, good morning. I want to hit you this with this right off the bat. Are you a fan of Daylight Savings Time? I'll tell you what, I'm such a non-time guy, I don't even know when it starts. I guess it's this weekend. And yeah, tonight when you go to bed, set that uh, clock ahead one hour. The, I'll tell you, the time that I like it is when I, whatever happens when I get the extra hour sleep. <laughs> that's the <laughs> night that I like whatever's going on. The rest, I'm totally irrelevant because with two kids running around and the radio show and the business, whatever, I, my wife is very attuned to it. I don't even know what time of day it is at the time. I don't care. <laughs> And, and and dealing with the kids, no matter what day of the week. I, the, the time that matters to me is 4 o'clock when Leo gets off the bus, whether the sun's out or it's dark. <laughs> that kid comes in here, and it's a whirlwind, a six-year-old, and that's when the time matters to me. How about you? So there you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, people complain, and ah, they ought to keep it one th- I don't, I don't mind it. Um, as I, you know, I don't know. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Um, I, I used to be, you know, really in favor of the daylight savings time. And now, you know, I kind of like to be in the house and it's starting to get dark at, you know, quarter to five, five o'clock. And it's it's the winter and it's dark. I feel that's the way it should be. Yeah, okay? what's wrong with that? I don't have any problem yeah, with that. Time yeah. to, to then, uh, you know, make a dinner and get rolling. Sometimes the sun is still out. You're still out and about. Now, of course, I want the sun out, and it's natural, of course, in the summertime. You're barbecuing outside. You want the sun out till you know, 7 o'clock or what have you. But uh, I don't know. I don't even know where they came up with it. It's crazy. Now, well, well I, can times, no. aren't, I can tell you exactly. No. What's that? I can tell you exactly. And this, this could go in the everything. In fact, you could stump David with this as a trivia question. Okay. Because okay. I'm saving up trivia questions for him. Uh, yeah. Anyway, long story short, it started Benjamin Franklin came up with the idea because you would uh, burn less candles. Ah. Um, a money saving. You burn less candles. All right. So. Now, what about central time zone? Because we're in a couple of those stations, a number of those states, and some of them change the time some of them don't did you hear about this well, there's i think it's arizona that doesn't change the time i'm not sure about the other i states. think maybe iowa i'm not exactly sure there's a couple that don't change at all wow because so they're right in the middle and i guess it doesn't matter i, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on well, what are you going to say? I'll tune in. I'll try to listen to the show. You know, it's supposed to be 6 o'clock on Sunday, let's say. And I tune in at 6. Go, yeah, we're on at 6. I go, but it's 6 o'clock now. It's supposed to be in your location. It's an hour difference. No, it's 5 o'clock now. Oh, okay, whatever. Douglas, have you ever been with friends and come across a station that play? Because some, some of the stations play your shows recorded. Are there some, and not live, have you ever come right. across a station that is playing the show, um, record. You know, it, it's a recording, and you're in the car, you're in the house, or whatever, with them, and they hear you. They go, "Hey, wait, N- Douglas, that's you. I, that's I, you." I, the- I have. They, they don't like. I don't. I play it off like it's not on. I just kind of turn it on. <laughs> and, uh, it's in the background, and then it takes a little while. And they finally go, "What the heck? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, is it, how are how are you on the radio now?" And you know, like. It's a real mystery how you figure out how I'm talking to them. <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard to figure out, but it is. Well, a, just because people, you know, yeah, you know, there's some, uh, there's still some mystery behind radio. You know, yeah, some, why some not? We like that. All. Yeah, I like, I like yeah. all the characters and the different things that you can do and sound effects and whatever, just to kind of take you to another place from time to time. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of another place, uh, we're now in March. Yes, and I'm still waiting for the TV season to the good TV season to begin. In some ways, we talked about Orville and Discovery, and that's cool. But what else? I mean, are you in? Let's put it this way: I've watched The Masked Singer. I've had been forced to watch The Bachelor, watch Forged in Fire, Gordon Ramsay, Twenty Four Hours to Hell and Back, American Idol starting again. Uh, let's see, what was it? Curse of Oak Island still waiting for something to happen there. Schools, which is the Goldberg. Uh, sequel or whatever you want to say, the 
next to the spinoff. Cool Kids with uh, yeah. Martin Mull and Vicki Lawrence. Walking Dead, which I've, uh, they've lost me with. They've killed every character off. So, um, and I don't know, uh, any of these shows or any others that you're watching now besides Gotham we spoke about also, uh, Catching Your Fancy? I don't know if this is a successful season or not. I only saw... I've only seen two episodes of Cool Kids because I can never figure out when it's on. Right. I can't I, answer. I, <laughs> I tape everything. You're right. I don't know. I think it's a Thursday night. I'm not yeah, sure. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's I, not bad. It almost, it's almost like good, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just about there, but it's, it's not that great. But it's, it's watchable, I guess you'd say, you know? Uh, this school, have you seen this one, the Goldberg? Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm starting to warm up to it. I didn't too. like it at first, but I'm starting to warm up to it a little bit. Um, I really like the way that they have, uh, at the end, they bring the real teachers in who are still alive. That's that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It is. Yeah. Um, uh, and, the, and the characters are pretty, they're starting to flesh them out a little bit more. They were smart because if you remember, I don't know if you saw the, the pilot to that, it was the principal's niece who was the center of the show. Uh, and they yes, changed yes, that yes, to yes, the, yes. that character, Laney, which I think yeah. you know, works better as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, right, so that's something. But Walking Dead, I know you were never a fan, but no. you know, they've killed everybody off. So I, I'm, it used to be such a great show. I'm, I'm out on that. Um, Mass Singer, I didn't watch it. I watched it. Uh, uh, my wife wanted to watch it, so we watched it as a binge weekend and watched all the shows. Watched the whole season within a weekend. <laughs> so that was, um, you know, it was cute. I got a little bit tired of uh, Dr. Ken. He, he kind of wore me down a little bit. Right. I right. think he's funny, but just a lot of stuff's over the top. Uh, right. I was surprised who it was. I'm not going to say who it was. Bachelor, never does that pro never has that program seen the light of our TV screen. You have to realize I have three boys, and my wife doesn't like stuff like that. Right, uh, Good for she, you. you know. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but so I tell I you what, to that I tell you what. One with my wife, it's one of the only things she likes to watch on TV. So if I want to hang out with her after a long day and whatever, I'm sucked into that. And I'm making all these snide comments, and I, I can't take it. And, She's yelling at me all the time. It's just like a, it's it's caused a lot of aggravation in this house. One but we get a kick out of it because uh, uh, you know not all of it, but some some of it is so ridiculous and and so predictable. Every show the same stuff oh, happens. Yeah. Uh, There's one girl that's angry at the other girl because they're not there for the right reasons, and he can't decide. I Meanwhile, well, they have a guy that's like. The most eligible bachelor in America right now. You know, the guy's uh, in shape. He's 26. He's a football football player. He's got money. He's got looks. And he's got to go on a show to find a wife. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's all, you know, all these people. Like, like, the real bachelor should be the guy, the nerdy guy that that's working on his app that, that hasn't hit it yet and needs somebody, you know, by his side. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, yeah. it's not these pretty boys. David Cohen. Exactly. <laughs> He would have been the perfect bachelor back in the day, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. But I'll tell you what one about, thing. I mean, I don't know. You well, want to watch... Um... I, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I am still... and I, I don't know if I would be... And I keep telling J.D., don't worry, don't worry. Douglas says this is there's something. Douglas says there's something. We're starting to lose steam on Curse of Oak Island, Douglas. I am too. But since you said, you know, you interviewed somebody that knew somebody or Kevin whatever. Kevin Burns, the creator of the show this year, there's, there's and something. And you said there's something there. We, so this is what J.D. and I have surmised. Here's what's happened. All this stuff that they find, this wood and this pottery and all this stuff, that's garbage that they've used to fill in previous sinkholes or previous uh, digs. And right. these guys are just going down and finding this stuff. That's the theory J.D. and I are on. In other on. words, people have dug before, found nothing, and they dug, they filled it in so the island doesn't get swamped or whatever. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. by sinkholes and things. And, and that's all they're finding. And there may have been a pirate's treasure chest once. Once. Although, did you see? I, I saw a couple of attractions. The latest one is supposedly some piece of metal that is attached or usually attached to a treasure chest. Have you seen that? Yeah, but like I say, you know, I I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. 
I know. It goes on and on and on, and they're digging up the holes, and, and now there's the, one of them's not structurally sound. And, yeah. Uh, but it, if it, it goes away, I won't have the... So Tuesday, Monday is a wasteland for me as far as TV. Tuesday is uh, Oak Island, and used to be Leah Remney, and that's right. that's off now. Uh, Wednesday, I do the regular comedy guy, you know, the, the regular comedy people, the Goldbergs, the right. school, the... Uh, uh, modern family, blah, 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 blah. And then Thursday is, you know, Gotham, Orville, and something else that I tape and I watch on Fridays. I forgot what it was. Friday, I don't even know what's on TV. Is there anything on? Is Does TV even work on Friday nights? I know. It's amazing. We we actually tape whatever's taped or watch whatever's taped that week, you know, that we put in there for the kids and all that. And we have a family movie night or a family TV night with, with that. And uh, it's never a show that's live on Friday night. Never. Yeah, I don't think there is TV on Friday. Oh, no. Oh, he- heavens. Heavens, no. Uh, the Blacklist is on Friday night. I never they saw it. moved the Blacklist to Friday. Did you ever watch the Blacklist with James Spader? I don't Spader? think so. They moved it to Friday night, which is like the graveyard of TV. And, right. Uh, but, you know. But, but now remember? what about upcoming? Are you looking forward to Have you ever seen Stranger Things, Game of Thrones? Or I guess that's nope. it, those two. Nope. All right, so those are coming up. There's a new one, The Watchmen. Have you seen that movie a long time ago, The Superheroes? Yeah. I... HBO's got a new take on that coming out. So that kind of might be okay. Curb Your Enthusiasm, you ever watched that? Never watched it when it was on because I don't have HBO. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if you can <laughs> get it now, sometimes it's rerunning elsewhere. That's worthwhile. That was, of course, uh, uh, Larry David, who's the creator of, of co-creator of Seinfeld. Douglas, uh, I just want to tell you one thing. I had HBO. I canceled HBO after the final episode of The Sopranos. So, <laughs> no. So, my view of the East Coast is The Sopranos. I laugh because that's twenty years ago. <laughs> Can you believe it's that long? Yeah. You know, I've, there's been the. Uh, they've been talking with the creator. Uh, I've I've read a couple of things the last couple of weeks. It's funny you bring this up about you know how did it really end? What did it end? Do do right. do do do. And they're going to be doing I guess a prequel yes. movie to all this. Yeah, uh, with a young prequel Tony movie so they're forth. doing. Yeah, so, so I, we're actually going to have Terry Winter on the show in a couple of weeks, who was uh, writer of a, a number of episodes, thirty or so of episodes, and he won an Emmy. I'm sorry. Four Emmys for the wow. Sopranos. See, you know, isn't that funny? See, I, I imagine you and David sitting around a place like, you know, the Bada Bing or whatever, and that's what you guys do. Uh, but- when I was in my 20s and 30s, that is, this, uh, <laughs> it was what it was. There's no doubt. That's why it took me till I was 42 to get married. To get lo- <laughs> I thought you were going to say, that's, long- that's why it took me so long to get through school. So. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, you know, and, and what about this new Boba Fett um, Star Wars series. You know, I'm the, curious. They're calling it the Mandalorian, and I'm trying to figure out what that is. The only thing I know is a mandolin, which is a which is an instrument. So I can't figure out anything from the title. Boba Fett is supposed to be a bounty hunter that's not really a good guy. So are we turning this into a? It's Disney, so are they turning him into a hero or is an anti-hero? I think there's enough questions just going in. Then I'll give it a shot. Although I'm off of Star Wars, they've kind of ruined it for me with these new movies. Yeah. But I may, uh, I may take a look at that as a, well, a weekly Star Wars TV series. That could be interesting, depending upon what they do with it. It's supposed to be a time frame in between the second two, second and third movie of the original. Uh, you know, was it um, Empire Strikes Back and uh, Return of the Jedi? It's supposed to happen in a time frame between those two movies. Now, from from my Star Wars canon, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's a bounty hunter that was actually a clone of a real guy. So Boba yeah. Fett is, so maybe this is about the real Boba Fett who was cloned and became the bounty hunter, or was Boba Fett the bounty hunter that was cloned and became the other soldiers? I, I, I've never quite been able to piece that together. Well, there might be a, a situ- Well, first of all, in the second trilogy, that came out, mm-hmm. the Boba Fett story was developed as Boba Fett as a kid, if you remember. Yeah, I, I remember that. I remember and that. And that came out. So I wonder, you're exactly right, so I wonder what they could do is they could have this Boba Fett running around and all of a sudden have him die, and then another one pop up, because there's be. clones everywhere. He pops up on Oak Island. 
years. He could be here. He could show up on the Discovery or on the Orville. There you go. What's up with tonight's show? <laughs> well, uh, you know, we had a nice time last week talking Rod Serling and mm -hmm. Twilight Zone with Nicholas Parisi, the author of a book, Rod Serling, His Life, Work, and Imagination. And it went so well that I think we're we definitely having him back again this week to talk a little bit more of Twilight Zone, but also let's go into like a little bit of the Planet of the Apes, believe it or not, uh, Rod Serling wrote that, uh, Night Gallery, and talk about other things about Rod Serling uh, uh, and, and see where he fits in today's world. Uh, what is his view? Uh, he was a very outspoken guy. What was his view of uh, other actors and actors he had on his show that he liked and didn't like? He comes out in many interviews and oh. talks about people that he didn't like and didn't feel they did a good job on the show. And, uh, and so we're going to dive into all things uh, for a second week, all things Rod Serling, and it's a really great interview. The guy's a really a fountain of, of information. He really, uh, really is a lot of fun. What's your favorite uh, Twilight Zone episode? To Serve Man. All right, and that is the one That's where, where the, yeah, the, the aliens come down they solve all of man's problems, man's humanity's problems, and, you know, there's no fighting, no wars, and so forth. And then they say, okay, now they want to see our planet come on back to our planet. And they bring back humans back to their planet, and they leave a book, and the title of the book is called To Serve Man. And they thought it's to serve man originally, you know, to solve the cancer problem and solve right. food problems, and it turns out to be a cookbook. I'm going to skip past... Twilight Zone, and go to uh, Night Gallery, one of my f favorite night galleries, and scared me, and, and st I think about it today every once in a while, it was about a kid that was looking for this treasure, this old man told him about this treasure, then told him, this guy was a creepy guy, and people said to stay away from this guy, and so forth, so the guy tells the kid where to go dig, the kid goes out in the field, late afternoon, digging and finally finds this box opens it up and it's the guy and the guy comes out and gets him and eats him ah! <laughs> never saw that <laughs> tonight at six o'clock tomorrow night at six o'clock everything old is new again with douglas uh, viviani and david cohen douglas have a great show tonight thank you enjoy it enjoy the weekend and we'll talk next week